Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, August 22nd, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Tropical Storm Harold makes landfall in South Texas as torrential rain and strong winds batter the coast. Much needed rain, indeed. Keep calm. It's boom time. Tropical Storm Harold made landfall on Padre Island early this morning with 35-mile-an-hour winds near north of Port Mansfield, Texas, and was moving west, northwest at 21 miles per hour. Significant damage and some erosion here to the barrier islands and the beaches, even though it was a minor storm, a tropical storm, but it's bringing heavy rain to the tip of Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis, which is much Needed. Good news there. Hurricane Hillary soaked in already wet California. Is the drought over? People have been saying, in fact, climate alarmists, that this uh, storm did not affect the drought in any significant way. And California is still in a drought, which is completely incorrect. Here is the drought monitor from August 17th prior to the storm. And this entire region of abnormally dry and moderate drought will be erased the yellow and the peach there in the next update. Let's see if they've even gotten that. I can't believe they haven't updated this. Nope, still on the 17th. But there is no drought in California. No long-term drought, no extreme drought, no severe drought, no mo exceptional drought. There's no drought, just moderate dry and abnormally dry at this moment. All of this will be erased due to the last storm. So the mainstream media once again is full of bullpucky. Here is the tropical update, the most recent update from the National Hurricane Center. Let's refresh it just in case anything's happened. Most of those named storms have either dissipated or have become disturbances. Disturbance number two could loop around here and become a threat in the next few days. Disturbance number one doesn't look to be all that significant. Franklin, however, let's take a look, is going to be moving up north over the Dominican Republic. Let's take a look at the warning cone here. It's going to be moving over the Dominican Republic as a tropical storm and may redevelop into a hurricane as it quickly shifts here and may affect Bermuda uh, early next week. So that's bad news for tropical storm Franklin. And we've already got tropical depression Harold moving across Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. That's going to be making its way. Let's take a look at the current tracks of Harold. And those are not found. I wonder why that is. It's currently updating. Of course. We always get screwed. Let's see what if they have a cone of depression or movement of Harold. Yeah, they're showing it moving east across Texas, the next of the Schmexis. Let's look at the warning cone here. Yeah. And it's going to rapidly turn up here into New Mexico and head towards Utah. And unfortunately, the spaghetti models are being updated as they usually are at this time when we're making the video. Now, Maui home left untouched by wildfires while Lahaina neighborhood is completely destroyed. Many people are posting complete nonsense about directed energy weapons and lasers that burn everything but blue roofs. This is all nonsense construed by short-minded people that don't have many brain cells. But... There is evidence that there is no directed energy weapons and that houses like this that survived make zero sense. In fact, the owners themselves later learned that the whole neighborhood had been caught in the blaze and would likely burn down. And we're talking about this house in question. Everything in Lahaina is burnt, but this house. Now, why is that? Are they billionaires? Are they part of the cabal? No. In fact, the people that own the house started crying. They felt guilty. They still feel guilty. The couple purchased the home just two years ago, but were unsure of why the home was spared. They said the home had been in disrepair when they bought it. It was a fixer-upper, and they did make some renovations. But the home was built using California redwood, like most of the homes made of wood, Milken said, which has some natural fire-resistant properties, but so did the home next door which was completely burned to the ground. It's a 100% wood house, so it's not like we fireproofed it or anything, according to Dora Atwater Milken, the owner of the home. 
So no, there is no conspiracy. There's no directed energy weapons. This is called a wildfire. And the direction of the fire is determined by the wind, not by the government. Trust me on that one. Here is, we've got it, Tropical Storm Harold's early track forecast. Thank God we got that up. You can see how it's going to basically strife the edge of Texas, the Nexus, of Texas, enter in here between New Mexico and Arizona and make a quick turn up into the Four Corners region, bringing us much needed moisture. Now, as far as Tropical Storm Hillary is concerned, take a look at the spike happening at Lake Mead right now. Went up six or eight inches today, and I imagine a much higher spike showing tomorrow, moving almost vertical now. Good news at Lake Mead. And there we can see Harold moving across Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, and quickly turning up into the Four Corners region, bringing us much-needed moisture to this area. Good news, as by midweek and the end of the week, the Northeast is going to be inundated with flooding. Now Greece discovers 18 charred bodies as Southern Europe wildfires spread. Our hearts, our thoughts, and our prayers go out to those that lost their lives. And this is in Greece. As of today, 18 charred bodies were found in a remote village in northeastern Greece on Tuesday. Very similar to Halina's story, only much smaller casualties. These wildfires in Greece have been raging for days, according to the fire brigade. Firefighters said, firefighters said they were investigating whether the bodies found near the shack of the south of the village were migrants. Wow. Here's your smoke map for the next 72 hours. Hours of powers. You can see smoke from the Canadian wildfires in Alberta and BC will be moving south, continuing in the Pacific Northwest. Another plume of Canadian wildfire smoke affecting the entire East Coast all the way down to Florida, for goodness sakes. And we had some haze here in our region, and that's due to a flare-up, which you can see right here, um, of the Quartz Ridge Fire in Archuleta County. So you can see some of those smoke plumes here that we're dealing with. Here's the San Luis Valley. And I believe this is the court. Where are we? This is Quartz Ridge right there. So that's the fire we're dealing with, which is just about 10 miles from where I am speaking. So. Seismic update, no quakes of note. What do we got going on right here? We've got a 4.0 in White City, New Mexico. That is deep well injection from fracking 3.5 in Ackerley, Texas probably very much the same and another 2.5 in Nebraska all because of hydro fracturing in my opinion well we could probably prove it but there are more important things to tackle tonight overall seismicity worldwide is quite low which is good news worldwide volcano news update you see that big boomer that's Dempo volcano in Sumatra out of nowhere a short-lived violent explosion yesterday morning. Quite amazing to capture here on video. Look at that. Now, other than that, very little activity of significance worldwide. Normal volcanic activity, Sabin Kaya to 23,000. Well, we've got this Dempo boom. And we've got Nuvado de Ruiz, Carangi Tang puffing to 18,000 feet today. Ubinus to about 10,000 feet above the surface of the caldera. Mayon. Many others, Ubinus to 23,000, Sabancaya to 22, Ubinus to 20, Raventador to 14, Ubinus to 20, Biko to 15, Sabancaya to 24. Pretty normal activity worldwide. Nothing out of the ordinary except this short lived violent explosion yesterday at Dempo in Indonesia. Space weather news update. Some activity happening, low-level M-flare coming from this active region here may also be a filament release. Here is the update. A long-duration, low-level M-flare is currently in progress around AR3405 in the northwest quadrant. This event also looks to be coinciding with a possible filament lifting off just to the southeast of the flare center. More following later this evening. Well, no, it isn't. NASA seems to be doing the same tricky games. Here is the data set, and it jumps. Three, six, nine, 12. Gives us a few frames and eliminates all of the data so we don't get to see what's going on. It seems like the powers that be want to have control over you and everything geophysical that happens on Earth. And that 
Well, that is a scary scenario. We need to take back our sovereignty. Government is not controlling us. We are supposed to control the government. After all, we are a republic, are we not? Archaeologists uncover the oldest known projectile points in the Americas. Well, not really. I've been in contact with the head of the Smithsonian, Dennis Stanford, over the last few decades. And even 20 years ago, he revealed to me that some of the Salutrian bifacial points that measure up to 8 inches could be dating to 17,000 years ago. This is all being hidden in the alcoves of the Smithsonian for good measure. I don't know why papers like this are now trickling out, but Oregon State University archaeologists have uncovered projectile points in Idaho on the Salmon River that are thousands of years older than any previously found in the Americas, according to this <laughs> lie, because we've found numerous Salutrian sites dating back 17,000 years over the last 50 years. They're just hidden from the public, which is quite unfortunate. All the links will be below if you're interested in this. And in fact, these points are dating to 15,700 or so. And now you know. And some of them, well, look remarkably like Clovis. All you need is a flute in the center here, and this is a Clovis point, as well as this one and this one. Well, you get the picture. Clovis are the same people just a few thousand years later. North Atlantic volcanic activity. Now, volcanic activity is being accused of causing global warming. For the first time ever, funding is drying up, and geologists and other scientists are dipping their feet into the fraudulent science realms called Scientology, where in order to get money from the government, you've got to prove that global warming is caused by humans. So in this case, they say volcanoes erupting on the eastern shore of Greenland caused the temperature to spike 56 million years ago. I can't tell you more than a million times that all of the volcanoes that have ever erupted in our lifetime have caused the temperature to drop. But now, because volcanoes emit CO2 and they want to blame it on you, well, all the papers now say that volcanoes call te cause temperatures to rise. Sad state of affairs in science. But what's not a sad state of affair is the 34th annual Crestone Energy Fair, where we talk about real observational science, alternative building, reimagine yourself, your village, and nature. September 16th and 17th, 2023, 20, we need volunteers. This is the most significant sustainability event in the entire world. As the longest running sustainability fair in the nation, we are seeking motivated individuals to help fulfill a variety of roles to help the fair run smoothly. Each shift is organized into three-hour blocks, and completed shifts will be given complimentary food from the volunteer kitchen. Alternative diet options available. Please visit the website or scan the QR code to sign up for shifts. Every three-hour shift gives you meals. If you work the whole weekend, you can eat morning, noon, and night can stay for free. It's all free. It's a free event. We need to share the knowledge and the love for the times that are coming. And no one's bumming. Here's the paper to that nonsense article about the North Atlantic. We'll link that below for you as well. And for the Orp family out there, we have some unfortunate news to discuss with you, and it has to do with Gremlin. Now, Gremlin is our first dog here at the well, Alpine Ranch it. Project. Uh, we got her six years ago this spring. And unfortunately, there's a small lump on her leg that we went to go get looked at. They did a biopsy, and it is unfortunately not the good kind of cancer. Yeah, it's not benign. This one is the bad kind. And tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., I'll be taking her in for surgery to remove that and hopefully save her life. She is the most important part of the ranch. She is the one that is keeping our chickens safe. She saved our cats from being eaten. Absolutely an integral part of the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And if you could send your hearts, your thoughts, and your prayers for us, for our sweetheart, Gremlin. Um, 
tomorrow morning she'll be going into surgery. Hopefully, the type of tumor that she has, there's a one in three chance that it's not the be the worst kind, but the tumor is in fact malignant. So, pray for our little Grammy uh, that she recovers well and leads a long and prosperous life. That was a tough one. And if you have a chance, check out our, <coughs> our Twitter feed at Oppenheimer Ranch at Diamond the Dave, where Tucker Carlson put out episode 18 today, where he does a one-hour interview with Colonel Douglas McGregor, telling us why the war in Ukraine must end now. Every single thing that you've heard from the mainstream media is 100% lies and propaganda. What else is new? And that's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Pray for Gremlin and her rapid recovery. We love each and every one of you. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Watch all of our podcasts in one place commercial free. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom.